The Life and Sad Ending of Troy Donahue. Troy Donahue, born Merle Johnson Jr., was born January 27, 1936, in New York City. Donahue was the son of a retired stage actress and the manager of the motion picture department of General Motors. He developed an early interest in acting, but his parents did not want him to become an actor. To please his parents, he enrolled at a military academy instead of pursuing acting. However, after acquiring a knee injury, he was rejected by the Army. When Donahue was 18, he moved to New York and got a job as a messenger in a film company founded by his father, who had died when he was 14. He was fired because he was too young to join the Union. He attended Columbia University and studied journalism. He acted in summer stock in Bucks County. He trained briefly with Ezra Stone and then moved to Hollywood. One evening, producer William Asher and director James Sheldon spotted Donahue in a diner in Malibu and arranged for a screen test with Columbia Pictures, but it was unsuccessful. Sometime later, Donahue was in a car accident in which he drove off the road and plunged 40 feet down a canyon. Actress Fran Bennett introduced him to agent Henry Wilson, who represented Rock Hudson, among others. Wilson signed him and changed his name to Troy Donahue. Donahue signed with Universal Studios in October 1956. They started him off in small roles in films such as Man Afraid, Man of a Thousand Faces, The Tarnished Angels, Above All Things, and The Monolith Monsters, all from 1957. In 1958, he was also used in Summer Love and had a slightly bigger part in Live Fast, Die Young. He began appearing on TV in a guest part in Man Without a Gun. This was followed by parts in This Happy Feeling, Wild Heritage, Voice in the Mirror, The Perfect Furlough, and Monster on the Campus, where he was billed fifth. He often had better roles in TV, guest starring in episodes of The Californians, Rawhide, Wagon Train, and Tales of Wells Fargo and The Virginian. Donahue achieved good reviews for a brief but effective part in Imitation of Life, released in 1959, playing a man who beats up his girlfriend after he discovers she is black. The big break of Donahue's career came when he was cast opposite Sandra D in A Summer Place, made by Warner Brothers in 1959. The director was Delmer Daves. Warner signed him to a long-term contract. They put him to work guest starring in episodes of their Western TV series such as Colt 45, Maverick, Sugarfoot, all from 1959, The Alaskans, and Lawman, both from 1960. A Summer Place was a hit and made Donahue a name, especially among teenaged audiences. In 1960, he was named by Film Daily as one of the five finds of the year. He had a supporting part in a disaster movie, The Crowded Sky, in 1960. He is reportedly going to be cast in Splendor in the Grass, but missed out to Warren Beatty. Instead, Warner Brothers put him in a TV series, Surfside 6, which ran from 1960 to 1962 one of several spin-offs of 77 Sunset Strip, announced in April 1960. Another spin-off was Hawaiian Eye, on which Donahue had guest starred. On Surfside 6, Donahue starred with Van Williams, Lee Patterson, Diane McBain, and Margarita Sierra in the ABC series set in Miami Beach, Florida. Donahue's career got a big break when Joshua Logan dropped out as an actor of Parrish, Logan was replaced by Delmer Daves, who brought in Donahue as a star, and the film was a hit. Donahue and Daves reunited for another melodrama, Susan Slade, in 1962. They made a fourth film, Rome Adventure, same year, a romance starring Suzanne Plachette. In 1962, he claimed he received 5,000 to 7,500 fan letters a week. The following year, exhibitors voted him in the 20th most popular star in the U.S. He was also popular in Japan. After Surfside 6 was canceled, Donahue joined the cast of another ABC detective series, Hawaiian Eye, for its last season from 1962 to 63, in the role of hotel director Philip Barton, with Robert Conrad and Connie Stevens in the series' lead. Next, he did appear in a nearly beach party film, Palm Springs Weekend, 
1963, alongside several other Warner Brothers players. As a change of pace, Plachette and he were cast in a western, A Distant Trumpet, 1964, the last film of director Raoul Walsh. Donahue also had a brief tenure as a recording artist at the height of his fame in the early 1960s, releasing a handful of singles for Warner Brothers records, including Live Young and Somebody Loves Me. However, none of his recordings entered the Billboard Hot 100 list. In 1965, he was cast as a psychopathic killer opposite Joey Heatherton in My Blood Runs Cold. While Donahue was happy to break type and play a different type of role, he was not well received by the public. His contract with Warner Brothers ended shortly thereafter, although it ran out until early 1968. Donahue asked to be released from it in January 1966. In 1968, Donahue signed a long-term contract with Universal Studios for films and TV. This lasted a year and saw him get four roles. Guest slots on Ironside, The Name of the Game, The Virginian, as well as appearing in the TV movie The Lonely Profession. Donahue declared bankruptcy in 1968 and eventually lost his home. He later admitted that he began abusing drugs and alcohol at the peak of his career and increased use after his, his career began to wane. Donahue was struggling to make his way in a changing Hollywood. In 1969, Donahue moved from Los Angeles to New York City. While in New York, he appeared in the daytime CBS drama The Secret Storm for six months. He later called the role the best part I ever had. By this time, his drug addiction and alcoholism had ruined him financially. One summer, he was homeless and lived in Central Park. Then, he had roles in low-budget films such as Sweet Savior, 1971, The Last Stop, 1972, and Seizure, 1974, Oliver Stone's directorial debut. In 1974, Francis Ford Coppola cast him in a small part in The Godfather Part II as the fiancé of Connie Carleone. His character was named Merle Johnson, a nod to Donahue's real name. He was paid $10,000 for the role for one week's work. Donahue moved back to Los Angeles. He appeared in Cockfighter, 1974, for director Monty Hellman, and made South Seas in the Philippines. He acted in occasional television guest spots and appeared in whiskey commercials for the Japanese television market. After his fourth marriage ended in 1981, Donahue decided to seek help for his drinking and drug use. In May 1982, he joined Alcoholics Anonymous, which he credited for helping him achieve and maintain sobriety. Donahue continued to act in films throughout the 1980s and into the late 1990s. He appeared in the feature film Grandview, USA, which was shot in Pontiac, Illinois. However, he never obtained the recognition that he had in the earlier years of his career. His final film role was in the 2000 comedy film The Boys Behind the Desk. In his personal life, Donahue was married four times and had one child named Sean. His first marriage was to actress Suzanne Plachette with whom he had twice co-starred in films. They wed on January 5, 1964 in Beverly Hills and divorced nine months later. On October 21, 1966, Donahue married actress Valerie Allen in Dublin, Ireland. They separated in April of 1967 and she filed for divorce in April of 1968, charging him with cruelty, divorcing in November of that same year. Donahue's third marriage was to Executive Secretary Alma Sharp. They married November 15, 1969, in Roanoke, Virginia, and they divorced in 1972. Donahue's fourth and final marriage was to land developer Vicki Taylor. They were married in 1979 and divorced in 1981. He had a son named Sean by a woman with whom he had a brief relationship in 1969. He only found out about the son in the early 1980s when he ran into the woman again. Sadly, on August 30, 2001, Donahue suffered a heart attack and was admitted to St. John's Health Center in Santa Monica. He died three, la three days later on September 2nd at the age of 65. He was cremated and ashes given to the family.